all these wonderful faces at our school today. We have a special guest to join us today. And we have an inviting afternoon to you guys. So please relax, wear your mask, and make sure you do good hand hygiene. And I will pass it over to <laughs> Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Peter Morgan Gates. I'm the uh, commander for Army Recruiting in North Carolina. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very honor to be here at uh, St. Augustine uh, University today. I really appreciate uh, uh, the team here uh, inviting us over. And, uh, it's great to uh, be able to talk to the, the potential future soldiers today. Uh, but, uh, uh, those that are just interested in learning a little bit about leadership and uh, Army experiences. Uh, today we have a special guest with us, uh, all the way from Fort Sill, Oklahoma, uh, where he serves as the Deputy Commanding General uh, out there for the uh, Fire Center of Excellence. Uh, he's also the, uh, the Commandant for Air Defense Artillery School. He's a career, uh, career uh, Army Air Defense Artillery Officer uh, who, who uh, originated, originated residents from uh, North Carolina, and so we welcome him home. Uh, but uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, an outstanding officer and, uh, and mentor to the people, and so I, I think that we're going to benefit greatly from his uh, words of wisdom today. Uh, he served uh, at, uh, at Fort Bragg uh, for quite some time as a, in, uh, an air defense artillery unit down there, where he's commanded from all the way from the lieutenant to the two leader level to all the way to brigade command as an air, air artillery officer. And so uh, we uh, greatly appreciate the, his service and uh, his, his leadership. Uh, and I uh, appreciate the, his, uh, his attendance uh, here today coming home to North Carolina. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Brigadier General Richard Harrison. Let me talk to you about this. Is everyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Let's make sure. Hey, uh, I'm nervous up here because I'm back home my home state and I can't pass this up. My grandma would say, if you go back home, act like you know what you're talking about. So I'm going to do just that today. I'm talking about. Hey, uh, I got some, some tokens in my hand. So this is going to be more interactive than just me talking to you for an hour or so. So I'm going to call on you. I need your help, okay? And a little, tri little, little trinket for you to help you uh, to say thank you. Now, raise your hand and share with me what you believe is a myth about joining the Army. Who heard some myths out there? Either heard it or you believe it yourself. Start with, I heard this, or I believe this. Can you do that for me? I'll start with you first. I heard that the army, when you got the army, you have to get a job. Wow. That's so far from the truth. But thanks for sharing it. I got a little something for you here. Now, this is swag from the 88 school, so I'm plugging my own branch here while I'm giving you this swag. I'm thinking about going air defense artillery when you join the army, all right? Now, wash your hands. Don't touch your face, OK? <laughs> <laughs> You don't want that Omarion part. <laughs> Good. Also, too, I match energy. So if your energy is bad, guess what? My turn is going to be bad. So it's your fault, not mine. So if you bring some good energy, I bring good delivery. Fair enough? Oh. All right. Next myth you believe or you heard? That, like, they don't beat you? That's not you. You got that touch in the army, man. <laughs> You mean it too much. That is not true. Uh, we do not take food away from anyone in the army. In fact, our list of soldiers who have meal cards have three meals a day that you go to and get for free. Now, just to address yours, uh, yeah, you have a ton of opportunities to be in the army. In fact, the army has credentialing programs, programs that we teach you skills. For example, like A plus, the you know, software programming, we send it to that school for free. So when you do get the military, should you leave? Uh, for 20 years, uh, you can go out and get the job that you can do. We teach you how to drive trucks, so PDL. We teach you to get the license to drive that PDL while you're in the military, if you're in a truck driving in the last. How to drive a walkway, how to do other things, medical fields, uh, technical fields. So we teach you the job opportunities from the outside. In fact, the PAINS program uh, allows you to connect with industry that gives you five interviews, guarantee five interviews to get out of your army. The partnership we have with the day program, five interviews you're guaranteed to have to get out of your army. So the army has a, we have a future half your time in the army. Trust me, I'm going to be comfortable when I leave the army. Trust me. Real comfortable, partner. All right, wait, I, yeah, you next. I saw his hand first, though. What'd you hear or you believe? I heard that. I heard a 
No, that's far from the truth. You know, we, we certainly have the, some of the finest medical care on the face of the earth. We have the best doctors uh, and nurses on the, on, on the face of the earth. And I'll tell you, I'll tell stories. Stories help illustrate. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to tell a quick story. I'm going to tell a story. Stories will illustrate my point. You brought up a great point there. I'm going to tell you a story about, about me personally. Because I know me. I've been with me for 49 years. I think you hard to believe I'll be 50 next month. 200 pounds of twisted steel right here, baby. 28 years in the Army, you still can break it like me? You might want to think about signing up. Think about your family members who are about 50 years old. How do you feel compared to the little general here? I can still break it, baby. Tell them I do that. That's soldier power. Soldier for life. So think about that. When you're 50, you're going to look like me. That's pretty much right. good. I would cuss me in church. I can't cuss. <laughs> So I'm telling you now, I've been in the Army 28 years, you'll be a general, you look like me. No, I'm just kidding. A little bit about medical. Uh, I was a paratrooper at, uh, at the Lieutenant Colonel, I call it Mark. Newdigate. I butchered his last name bad. Lieutenant Colonel Newdigate told you a story about how I was, I was a paratrooper at Fort Bank, North Carolina. Prior to being a battalion commander, I was the XO of the same battalion uh, that I commanded. And I was on an airborne operation one day. I was on a test jump for a new parachute, a T11 parachute. This was about 2007, a 2008 time frame. And I failed to do a proper parachute landing fall because I was arrogant and cocky, thinking that I could land where I wanted to land. And in essence, if you're a paratrooper, you can't pick your landing spot unless you're like a golden knight to steer. You are being delivered to the ground by gravity. The good Lord determined where you're going to land. Well, that day, the good Lord determined I was going to land on my ankle and break it. Yeah, we're going to jump. As a major in the Army, Broken leg. Now, that pain was a pain that I never felt before, but I knew that he was broken. When I picked my leg up and it fell, I was like, oh yeah, it's broken. So let me tell you about the Army medical system. So two doctors came in and said, hey, we can put your leg in a cast, but we can operate on it. Put it in the cast, you'd be 80%. You have a little bit of limp, but you'll be okay, provided you don't bump your leg on something while in the cast. Or let this captain operate on your ankle and put a plate, a pin, and six screws in it, and it gets you to be 90% of better. What do you want to do? Let's go for the surgery. A lot more years ahead of me in my career, and I don't want to end it right now. Take a chance on 80%. I want to be as close to 100 as I can. I let a captain, I trusted the captain. He gave me hope. He said, sir, I can, I can fix your leg. He went on my leg, put those pins, screws, and plates in there. To this day, I run faster than I did before I broke my leg. That was 2007, 2008, and I'm still in the Army, so it's because of great medical care. In my leg now, it's still a pin, a plate and six screws. I could beat that folks in here right now. Because the Army medical system is just that good. And I trusted them. A doctor gave me hope. And that's the point that some of you who go in the medical field in the Army, you're going to give people hope. Think about that. You're on the battlefield, kind of think about your call of duty scenario, you get an arm going off. We have great medical soldiers, your teammates, the same people that wear a uniform that you wear, but they're medical professionals. They're going to be there for you to give you hope. That's what the Army provides for that. So I don't worry about those things, my friend, because I know a doctor somewhere is going to give me an opportunity or a medical nurse an opportunity uh, to be just fine. And I have not slowed down since I broke my leg. Now in the morning and the winter time, it's kind of slow. i got to warm my leg up a little bit. But when I get that leg going, you can't stop me. So thanks for bringing that up. Young lady, what do you have in terms of a, I believe, or someone told me about the Army? I witnessed a lot of people say that coming out of basic training, try to either buy a car or get married. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that one probably couldn't be true. And I think that either bad, those two things aren't bad, because at some point we need transportation, right? The beauty of it, you have a job now that allows you to buy a car with steady income. Because when you buy a car, you sign a contract with that lending, agency, you know, a bank or a credit union or whatever, I mean, you have to pay that payment or they come and get that car. Well, the Army gives you a, a job, a contract, where we're going to pay you every month. So why not have a car, because you have an Army career now, that's going to pay that car payment. The getting married piece, that's, that's kind of, you know, like adult life, right? It depends. You know, you, you can get married or not. I, I can't control that in the Army. That's not the Army's challenge. But I will tell you, you are a more responsible uh, spouse if you have a job or a career. You know, you, you can take care of that family that you're maybe starting. 
uh, because you have a stability, you have that stability there. The Army gives you stability. Think about this. In the Army, I've been in the Army really 31 years. Let me tell you why. November 5th, 1990, I was here in Raleigh, North Carolina at a match station that's no longer there, joining the United States Army Reserves. 31 years ago, I was a private United States Army. It's like a whisper in the ear that, 30, that, that kid 31 years ago to tell him that 31 years, man, you're going to be a general. I probably would have wet myself. <laughs> Just the thought of that. But that's how amazing the Army has been for me. And it's going to be that same way for you. So I have an opportunity now to provide a stable environment for my family. I have a paycheck. The Army gives me money for housing. You don't get that from, from, from Walmart. You don't get that from Target. You don't get that from, from IBM. I get money for a house on top of my base pay. I get money for food. It's not enough that my son is 15 to start paying the house. But the Army helps me out with a little bit of money for food every month. My health care and my kids' health care is taken care of because of the Army. Now, I said I'll be 50 next month. Next month is the last bill my mom pays for giving birth to me 50 years ago. She paid 10000 a month 50 years. She's probably going to pay it off. You guys didn't get that bill. Okay. It costs a lot to have a kid. So I'm telling you now, the Army has benefits in that yard. My wife, we've had three kids. My wife had three meals all in the hospital. After having my three kids, I paid $9. Three dollars per meal because I the army doesn't fund meals for a family. You gotta pay for that. They'll feed you, they can't feed your family. So nine dollars for my three kids, for me, back in those days when I was born 50 years ago, it was a lot of money to have a kid. So the army gave and will give me that stability, that the ability to support a family. So getting married after joining the army, not a bad thing. Because now you can buy that ring, right guys? Yeah, you can buy that big old rock. You want a big rock, right? What's that? The 19 year old, they might be a bigger rock. So, I, my wife and I got married. I graduated from Elizabeth State, State University. I got married after I commissioned in the Army, second lieutenant. So, her rock was small. It was a diamond chip. In fact, it was diamond dust. And after 10 years of marriage and, and make it to the rank of, I think it was a senior captain, I bought her a bigger ring. And the jeweler looked at that small ring and said, Wow, I think it fell out along the way. The diamond might have fallen out along the way. It was so small. But she has a rock now, I guarantee you that. Yeah. Because the army helped me take that rock. So again, it's not all about money. Money's important, so, but, but I want to share with you, the army has a bright future if you should, uh, should join the army, be an enlisted or an officer. I chose the enlisted if I was in college to get extra money, to get experience. I wanted to be a great leader, so I felt it was important to be a follower. And a recruiter paid by university, Elizabeth State University, uh, and it's to me the opportunity to join the Army Reserve while in college. Now I'm a competitive guy. Imagine that, right? I'm competitive. There was a cadet in ROTC. We won't call his name because somebody's probably cute to him in here. We're all from North Carolina. Let's say his name is McFadden. Cadet McFadden and I were in competition all the time. And I didn't know, I wasn't an athlete in high school or college. I was still was competitive, but I wasn't, I wasn't good at sports. But my NCOs who saw something in me said that, hey, this guy has something. He has something special. I gotta bring it out of him. The beauty of the army, the army puts leaders in your path, leaders in your organization, leaders in your life that will bring the most out of you. This leader, this master I thought the most out of me by putting me head to head against Cadet McFadden, we'll say. And I was told by recruiters, that's on hall, and uh, that I would be a stronger cadet and a stronger leader if I joined the Army Reserves. And I would beat Cadet McFadden. And I was like, okay, what do I sign up for now? So every year in ROTC, at least in my ROTC, there's a male category winner for PT, the highest PT score, and a female category winner for the highest PT score. So my freshman year, Cadet McFadden will call him, he won the highest PT score for the male category. Big old giant trophy. He was on stage, looked down at me on the front row and said, Mons, I'm here, and never get this trophy. I'm still mad today about that. I'm hot about that. You don't tell me that I'm going to get trophy. You don't deny me. So I went, joined the Army Reserve. While he was working out on the weekends, I was working out even harder. When he went to his job working at Burger King or whatever on the summer, I was at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, being a soldier, getting stronger, faster, leaner. Sophomore year came back, PT test came about, male category winner, guess who it was? Yours truly, baby. El Comandante. 
<laughs> Dunked on it. You know what I told him? As long as I'm here, you'll never get this trophy partner. So he got mad. I kicked the hornets that day. I knew he was being hot about that. I had to work extra hard. So I, I got better because I knew he was going to come for me. Junior year, state competition. Award ceremony comes about. Male category winner. What do you think, ma'am? A little bit louder? <laughs> Me, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Two years back to back, baby. Two feet. Guess what I told him? As long as I'm here, partner, you never get this trophy. You see where I'm going with this? That drive, as we say, that dog was in me. Not that I'm going to keep on out. I told him. But I had a fight with him that my NCO saw that brought the best out of me. Senior year, stakes are high. It's going down the senior year. He's getting it in, I'm getting it in. Male category winner, who can tell him? You. Me, baby. <laughs> in my mama's house right now in North Carolina, three trophies. I got on stage my senior year, I said, partner, I told you previous year, as long as I'm here, you'll never get this trophy. And in fact, I'm going to commission this summer, get a gold bar, I'm going to come back next year you're still here, I'm going to win that trophy because I'm just that good. So I'm sharing with you my story. That's a true story. It, it happened in the sense that leaders saw something in me. They poured in me. They invested in me. They encouraged me. I had a gap in my swing. We say in the Army, you know, use a golf analogy. I needed someone to push me. Some of you in that category, too. You know, I need someone to put their foot in my pants every now and then. And my instructor saw that. He brought us on hall to put me in the Army Reserves. He put me against Cadet McFadden to make sure that I was going to be the best that I could be. Now, Cadet McFadden never commissioned. He didn't join the Army. He is a post, postman back in our hometown. He's doing great. I'm a jerk because I had that dog. I had that drive. Leaders saw in me. He's just one example of how the Army has put me around great leaders to help me be here to talk to you today. That's what the Army does. Do you see Elon Musk you're talking today about coming to these organizations? No. You see me here because my four-star general said, leave Oklahoma, go back to your hometown and talk to the students there, talk to the cadets there, talk to the prospects there, talk to the parents there about military service. And share your story. Share what makes you you. What got you to this point? And I will tell you, being from a small town and having people invest in me got me to be there. And I had a desire to do something different. I, I didn't want to go to ECSU, graduate, and, and come to come to Raleigh. Not in a bad sense. I wanted to go further. I wanted to see other things. I wanted my kids to see other things. My nieces and nephews, I love them, but they know North Carolina and Virginia. That's the far as they go. My kids are seeing the United States from coast to coast, including Hawaii. Things that my nieces and nephews see in their social studies books, like Mount Rushmore, the Presidential Wax Museum, Old Faithful, the guys are in Yellowstone. My kids have been there. The Smithsonian, my kids have been there because of my military service. We have a nice house, a couple of nice houses. We have nice cars, a couple of nice cars. We have good retirement plans that I can start throwing as soon as I retire. When I retire, I'm comfortable. Also, my wife has had a career along with mine. Let's talk about that. A lot of times we focus on the soldier, and you all are soldiers. And you're going you're gonna to join the Army. I know you are. I'm confident. I'll be back in 20 years to see you up here talking. I'll be the old guy in the back with the bad leg. Because <laughs> that metal is going to start to rust. I'm just kidding. But my, my talking today is also stem on you have responsibility not only to focus on your military career, but your spouse. We hope that you all find someone that you love and that you're going to marry and you're going to you know, build a life with. But you got to make sure that they're successful as well, too. It's your responsibility. You as an Army, uh, as a soldier, have a responsibility to take care of your family. Because a lot of times in the Army, when we join, you're going to hear people talk about, we take care of soldiers in the Army. And we do. But you can't take care of soldiers. You can't take care of that person you pledged your life to in front of God and the church. And that, you have a responsibility to do that. We teach you how to be a good husband, be a good wife, be a good teammate to your spouse. We teach you that in the Army, that leadership piece. We provide resources for your spouse. My wife is giving resources and opportunities because of the Army to continue her career. 
My wife is always one rank ahead of me. She's a civilian, but she ranks me, outranks me all the time. And those of the men who are married, we know the deal, right? Yeah. They outrank me. My wife's a two-star general now, right now. She's the boss of the house. But she's had a great career in education alongside mine because the Army has given her opportunities for us to move. People talk about moving. Is there a myth out here about moving? Anybody have a myth about moving? Anybody heard any rumors about moving in the Army? What you hear about moving, young man? Go ahead, I'm sorry. My poppy, he moved a lot. He's in the military for right. he, he, Moving can be pretty good, though, right? I mean, it's about children. You know, like, that was me as well. I moved a lot, and I ain't like it. Right. I so yeah, I didn't do them. That's a fair thing. I got a 25 year old daughter and a 20 year old daughter, and they've experienced that moving piece. And it's challenging. As the older the kids get, it becomes tough. When they were small, it was a new room for them. And typically, I moved back to get promoted, so it was a bigger group for them. So they didn't mind that. But when they got older, it was tough. But I will tell you, my kids, my girls in particular, are more resilient now, and they're more outgoing because they moved. My, my youngest daughter ventured from UNC Charlotte. She was a, 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 a freshman and sophomore there. She transferred to UT Austin in Texas all by herself and has really put roots and grew and flourished in Austin, Texas because she's a military kid and she had the experience of moving and making friends and figuring things out throughout her career. So I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a good thing. I think it's something that you may not see now because you're young minded, but later on you're gonna see that moving around and making new friends and understanding how to go into a new place and find a new hairdresser, to find a new barber, to find a new you know, movie theater to go to, to find a new mall to shop at, that's gonna give you skills that other organizations, other state sectors, they just can't give you that. We can give you that in the military. And you meet great people. My dog's having her 21st birthday party next month. I'm nervous as heck. You know, dad, a 20 year old, 21 year old daughter in Austin, Texas, I'm nervous. But she is inviting friends from all of her military signs that she's getting in contact with to an Airbnb that I'm gonna pay for in Austin, Texas. Friends from Fort Campbell, friends from Fort Bragg, friends from Fort Hood, Texas, friends from the Pentagon. So that's the beauty, I think, of being a military kid. If you give your kids opportunity to meet people and stay connected, and technology keeps us connected. You can still have those friendships now, whereas before when you moved, you had to write, and no one likes to write. Now you can FaceTime, you can Snapchat, and whatever people do, TikTok. I don't know what kids do now, but you can stay connected now. What's that? Uh, what's the other stuff you guys use? Instagram, the gram? Yeah, you can hit them on the gram. <laughs> Yeah, you can hit him on the ground. Go to the dams. That's what the song said, right? Go down the dams. I think you stay out the dams. My advice is be careful of your dams, alright? We don't like him in the dams. Dad don't like those in the dams. No, it's not, alright? Stay out the dams. But, but I think military service and being a military, uh, uh, depending on a military kid, can give you the opportunity to do that. Uh, so let me take you talk about a few leadership lessons, things that I learned in the Army. When I was a young captain in the Army, one of my battalion commanders approached me and said, he's a battalion commander, I'm the S1, he's a personal officer. Back in my day, we didn't have personal officers to do that function. We took, in my case, air defense officers, and hey, we're now the S1, figure out how to do personnel stuff. So we figured it out. Like most soldiers do, we figure things out. That's the beauty of being a soldier. You, you get thrown somewhere and you figure it out. So he came in my office and said, hey, I want everyone in our retirement to have a PhD. I'm like, what? What are you talking about, Willis? Google that. That's, that's different strokes. The young folks in the room. That's Willis and all together. Stay with me now. You don't know Google. But he said, he said, not the funny hat and tassel PhD. You can call yourself doctor. I want everyone to have pride, hustle, and desire. I was like, wow. The light bulb came on. I'm a captain in the army. I've never heard of these things word put together like that. Having pride, thinking pride in, in first of all, your last name on your uniform. Every day I put this uniform on, I represent the Harrisons, my family name. So it's gotta be right. I don't want to bring disrespect to my family name. So taking pride in that every day. Also have US Army my uniform. Taking pride in being part of a bigger team that's bigger than me. An organization that has been on the face of the earth longer than the US has been a of the nation, the army. I can't bring this credit to that. But automatically, I wake up in the morning and think about I'm taking these two entities, my last name and my army, to the next level with my 
service my performance. That's, that's the pride. Pride is not letting someone who under my command get hurt, to get assaulted, to get raped. Pride pushes me to make sure that I help prevent that. I have prevent that. I don't allow that to happen in my formation. I take pride in that. Pride in my unit being the very best. Pride in winning. I have a winning background. I told you a story about, you know, Cadet McFadden and I. I'm going to win. Like Denzel said in, in uh, the, uh, the football movie was, remember the Titans? I'm going to win. I'm a winner. you got to have an attitude no matter what sector you go in, but the Army needs people to have a winning attitude. So think about winning. So he said the, the P stands for pride. Think of pride. The H stands for hustle. He said, I want you to, everyone in our unit to be about their business. I want to be given a mission order, and I look at a soldier to take care of that mission order quickly, swiftly, and get back to wherever he she needs to do. I have a, I have a motto. Do what I got to do, and I go back and do what I want to do. You give me a task, I'm going to knock it out, I go back and do what I want to do. That's that hustle. I tell people, I talk fast, I think fast, I am fast. Because I'm going to hustle. I'm going to go out there as a kid say, now I'm on my grind. What the rat song say? On my grind? I'm on my grind every day. I'm hustling out there. Because that's what you have to be successful. You got to grind. You got to hustle. You hear the rap song. Come on now. Don't play the light grinding with me now. I keep up with the streets. Well, this is the rap music too. Hustling, hustling. And then D stands for a desire. The desire to not let your organization fail. The desire for you to achieve your objective. No one's going to deny me the bucket. To use a basketball analogy, if someone's guarding me, when I get to the basket, I'm going to shatter the backboard. Because you deny me for a few seconds before I can get around you and dunk on you. I'm putting glass in your hair. That's how I approach life. And I'm asking you to think about that for your future. That no one's going to give you anything. But people are going to stack up against you like defenders. And your job is to go around them or go through to them and put glass in their hair to dunk them. You need that drive to be successful. That's what got me here today, just having a drive and being a good person. So the PhD has stuck with me now since I was a captain, which is uh, about the year 2000. You know, so for 22 years now, I've been thinking about and earning my PhD. Just something to think about. I'll share something else with you. I want you to think back for a second when you were in kindergarten. For some of you, it went too long ago. For me and Mark, this young man right here, <laughs> this young man right here. Kindergarten was a long time ago. But think back when you were in kindergarten and there was two students picking in the game of kickball, two captains. Think about this now. That was a nerve-wracking time if you were a kid waiting to pick the kickball. Oh, we all can remember that. We're, you, can, you can bring it to today's time. When you're on the basketball court and wait for somebody to get a pickup game. You get to pick last, you feel kind of bad. Get pick last doesn't make you feel good about your talents or who you are as a person. So think about this. These two kids are picking, and typically they pick the first person pick, the first round, first draft pick, the first seed is the person who can kick and catch. A good athlete gets picked first for a kickball team. That's what you want in a team, person who has the skills, the talent to go out there and do it. Second pick typically is just a good person to have on the team. Just fun to have around. This all around good person. Third, fourth, fifth, those people kind of get picked based on such random numbers. Last person gets picked because a lot of factors. They can't kick, they can't catch, and it ain't fun to have on the team, and it makes smell. <laughs> Bottom line, you don't want to get picked last. My mentor told me, he said, you know what? Live your life so that you pick first in kickball. Think about that. Live your life so you pick first in kickball. Worst case, second place, you pick second. So think about that. If you pick first in kickball, it means you're good at what you do. If you're a soldier, you're good at being a soldier. You're going to pick first in kickball. You can get out there, you can kick on the battlefield, you can do what it takes to be successful in the army. If you pick second, you're a good person. He said, Rich, you're not going to be always a good soldier because you're not that, you know, you think you're better than you are sometimes. But default number two, Rich, be, default to being a good person. If you can focus on being a good person, you can pick which second round that you find in the army. So think about that. Not all of you are going to join the army and stay 20 years. Not all of you are going to join the army and, and, and excel to the rank of general officer. But I ask you today, I charge you today, just be good people. At the end of the day, being a good person will take you a lot further than, than you can imagine. There's four things, four principles in the army that you can bang on. That's grit, luck, timing, and skill. 
Those four principles control your armor career. Grit and skill, you control those two things. You control how hard, how much you get at it, your PhD, you control that grit. You control your skill, how hard you study, how hard you learn to document, how hard you prepare for whatever task you have at hand. You control that. You can't control luck, you can't control time. That's up to higher being or whoever you believe in. So focus on what you can control, grit and skill. And I will tell you, you have a bright future in the United States Army. So I'm going to pause now. I've been talking a lot. I'm going to ask you open up some questions, and I'll go back to some more stories as I demonstrate some points today. So how are we doing on time? Did you go ahead and have our? I have our. You sure? How do you think your money's worth out? Is that good? Because you paid the five a year, right? Your taxes paid the five a year for your parents' taxes. So I'm okay, giving your money's worth. So I'll open up. Who has questions for me? I'll, I'll open up any questions. If I can't answer it, I'll uh, I'll tell you I can't answer it. Well, I'll get back with you. So the mayor you spoke about the college and the art of the world. So what made you go to the The college? Well, the oh. college and the art Oh, great, great question. Um, in high school, I wanted to be a businessman. I wanted to own a chain of motels. That's kind of weird, yeah? But hey, I was young and not so smart. Uh, so I went to I went to college and uh, with the idea of studying business, and I made the business. And I was approached by an ROTC PMS, and he said, "Hey, as a freshman, you need two PE classes to get two credits, and that's two finals, that's two midterms, that's two classes you got to go to. You take ROTC, two credit hours, and I'm gonna guarantee you an A to help your GPA out." I was like, "What do I sign up, man? I like this. I like the way you think. Is it one midterm, one final exam?" That's how I got an ROTC. True story. By, by PMS telling me that, hey man, you gotta take two classes, you take one class, I can only guarantee you an A, and you'll be there. So that was the, the hook that got me in, and then the competition that Master Army Gibson did between me and Dan McFadden uh, was uh, what kept me in there, and I became good at it. It was something that I was finally good at. I wasn't good at sports. Academically, I was, I was pretty good. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm in church for a while. I was pretty smart. Uh, but what the Army gave me was a source, a, a sense of, of uh, camaraderie and teamwork that I had had. Well, I wasn't part of a sports team, but I didn't have that in high school. The all the teaching program gave me that team. I was part of the Ranger Challenge team. I see it right there, partner. I was a one rope bridge master, baby. <laughs> that was also pretty good to hammer, hammer head assault course, too. So it gave me a sense of purpose, and that really stemmed me. And I was good. And now look at my uniform, too. I'm being honest. When you walk around campus, at least on my campus in my day, with your uniform on, you look pretty bad going good. You did color guard a couple of times uh, on campus, and people got compliments, had a little ass on everything, you know. I was like, I, I like this, you know. And the young ladies like that, too. I'm just being honest. They were trying to holler at me. And I was a freshman. I was like, OK. Don't holler at me. My wife was a sophomore, so I pulled up over. So these are a couple of times, baby. I'm taking a softball as a freshman because I'm going to get my uniform. That's why I stayed in the Army. And that's why I made the day. I'm going to tell you, I'm just giving you an honor. I do good my uniform. I'm going to tell you. When I put this on, I, I, I call it the hula seat. I put it on, I say hula. Hula? Hula. Yeah, you do have a hula seat. There you go. Call the hula seat. Great question. Any other questions? I go on for days. Uh, you and then you, my friend. Uh, Sir, for MS1, Great question. Uh, both branches are becoming highly more technical. Uh, we're looking for those degrees in you know, STEM, STEM background, looking for great communicators, looking for cadets who are uh, who are physically fit as well. Of course, we carry a cannon round and round. You have to be fit. And for ADA, we're putting the ADA soldiers back into divisions, maneuver formations. So you're out there maneuvering like I did back in the day at Fort Campbell with infantry and armor. So we're looking for, for cadets who are physically fit, who have you know, high academics, you know, have, a, have a either STEM background, or have a high attitude to learning technology, new technology, and folks that are just good communicators. Because now we're putting you in front of division commanders, and brigade commanders, key commanders, and to explain what you bring to the fight. So I bring five Avengers, six to eight teams, or whatever, and this is how I'm going to protect your critical assets with my resources here. Uh, and they're just good people, too, man. At the end of the day, we want good people on our branches, good people who want to be a part of a branch that's uh, 
highly technical. Like I mentioned before, my branch, the ABA branch, is bringing in laser on the battlefield. The first branch in the Army that has a 50 kilowatt laser mounted on a striker vehicle is coming to my branch. There's four of them, four prototypes, being delivered to Fort Seal in September of this year. So new lieutenants coming to ABA, assigned to that unit, will have a chance to work on a 50 kilowatt laser to shoot down uh, rockets, artillery, and mortars, to shoot down counter um, UAS that fly across the, uh, the battlefield. And the controller for that weapon system, Xbox controller. Yeah. You know why? Because soldiers said, this is the controller that I need, or the weapon system I need, the control system I need, that I'm used to, that I can come with. So the same button on the Xbox, the only system that controls a 50 kilowatt laser. So we take soldiers and send them out to factories and industry and say, what do you prefer in the weapon system? And they say, I want this here, that here, that there. And the CEOs and companies go, okay, okay, okay. And they make it for us. They know they make it for the customer. So that's why I think joining our branch, one, I got a point of the AA branch from the AA Commandant, but two, I think it's a great branch. We are the most diverse combat arm branch in the Army, the ABA is. We have more African Americans, other Hispanics, we have other uh, nationalities, and we have more females than the other combat arm branches that are out there. Opportunity for everybody. Now, I'm the first black commandant of the ABA school. I'm number 44. Ironically, President Obama's number. Someday. I compare myself to him. I'm just saying, me and Obizi. A lot of things in common. <laughs> a lot of things in common. But I will guarantee you, based on what we do, we do developer wise, I will not be the last black commandant of my branch. I'm doing my best, other leaders doing their best to bring up the next generation. So that's what we do. We're investing in leaders. One of my priorities, my top priority, is leader development. I gotta grow the next commandant. Regardless of what he or she looks like or what gender they are, what nationality, what religious preference, I don't care. I need a great leader for the future because the future is uncertain. The next battlefield that you are going to be on is far different than what we served on. We're going to have things flying in, lasers going off, we're going to have artillery rounds that you didn't see, you're going to have hypersonics that are fired from another country to land on our country in a matter of minutes. That's the next battlefield that we're going to have that you're going to be on. I need thinkers, people who can solve complex problems quickly and decisively in order to win. Because no one goes to war to win second place. We go to war to win first place. We go to war to win. Our leadership in the Army says people first and winning matters. We have put a lot of effort into people first. You just don't know that the, the things we've done to make sure that you become the focal point of our Army, the people. You can, I can give you lasers, I can give you cannons, I can give you, uh, I can give you uh, tanks, but those machines don't run themselves. They need people like you, leaders like you, huge leaders like you, in order to operate those things to the best of their ability. I need the best minds in order to win the next war. I can't have you go out there and, and, and make, you know, um, those, those hybrid vehicles. That's great. Elon Musk needs people. Tesla needs people to work there. But we need you as a nation to help us prepare for and, God forbid, execute the next war and win. I'm here to make a, a pitch for that. Leave your uniform. It's a great career for you. Not every, now, I want you to understand, a lot of the myths out there, I got a list of myths that I'm supposed to talk to you about. You gave most of them. But one of the myths is that you go to war in the Army. The Army has stood up to fight and win America's wars. And, and win what we're going to do. But that's the purpose of the Army. That's what we're here for. But not all soldiers go to war and engage with the enemy in close combat. There are other responsibilities out there, other jobs out there that you can potentially go into if you don't desire to be in close combat with the enemy. There's tons of support opportunities, there's tons of medical fields you can go into. So just understand that should the nation call you to go to war, you have to do that. But don't make that the only decision that you're worried about. You worry about going to war. Because if you do go to war, I'm confident you got leaders who have trained you and prepared you to not only go to war, to destroy the enemy, and come back home safely. I've been deployed five times. I've come back home safely with all my limbs five times. Just understand that it's a possibility of anything you do. But I will tell you, you're prepared. The Army cares about you. Leaders, as a, as a, as a commander, 
I have more gray hairs in my head because I worry about my soldiers. No one outworked me in my formation when I was a commander. I got paid the most, therefore I worked the most. I wasn't working out there every day with my hand, but my mind, my heart, my soul was there working for my soldiers 24 7. That's what we give you in the Army. We give you that, that, that care, that compassion, that, that support you need when you need it. Now, let's talk about suicide and the lives. An Army has a, a challenge, all sorts of challenges, suicides are going on. Uh, in fact, we're doing not so well in the Army, and society is doing a little bit better. And I'll just open kimono and, and full transparency. We as Army are trying our best to get after suicide. We have to stop and curb suicide in our army. Every soldier loss is it. certainly a life loss, opportunity loss, and it's combat power loss. It's readiness loss because the unit takes takes a hit from that. If you lose a teammate, it's tough. It's tough to recover a unit when you've had a suicide. But the friends left behind wonder what happened. What did I? What did I? What did I miss? What could I have done to prevent that? Now the whole unit now readiness has deteriorated a bit because the soldier in that formation has committed suicide. We do everything we can to do that. There's programs we have out there. We embedded healthcare professionals in formation that you can go to. We're working hard to reduce the stigma of someone going to seek medical mental health. We don't want people not to go because they're worried about what someone's going to say or chain command is going to look down on them. They're going to get their clearance suspended or taken away. We we've, we've moved from that, and we're going to make sure that that no one puts a stigma on our soldiers who seek help. Uh, we want to make it so that we want to get help, and you get help, and we get you back. If you break a leg, we want you to recover and, and get healthy. If something in your mind is not quite working, we want you to get healthy and recover from that, and get you back back into the fight. But we care for you. We look out for you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's another big problem. Like a lot of soldiers that come back from mental injuries and people that they have children and that they also get better. That's it. That's a great point. I've heard the same myth too that soldiers go to war and come back with PTSD. Um, it's, it's a possibility happening. Uh, but I will tell you, PTSD not only happens in war, it happens in the car accident out here on Interstate 40. Uh, you have a traumatic event from a car accident and you can get on the highway again years later and still have that memory and have PTSD. Uh, there's programs out there to help you cope with that PTSD and help you, help you, uh, help you develop uh, techniques to kind of calm yourself down when you get anxiety. And even medicine out there that will help you bring your anxiety down. For PTSD. But not every soldier has PTSD when they come back. There are a few, and, and certainly we, we, we care about them. We want to get them whole again. Uh, but I will tell you, I think it's been played in terms of numbers. Five times deployed, I got back with PTSD. My wife says I'm crazy, but I'm not. I'm, I'm good. Certain things you have to deal with just in life. And I think that the Army gets a bad rap because of what people see on TV. 28 years in the Army, 31 when we cut my time in the reserves. I've seen the Army done a lot more for me than what other you know, organizations that are, that are out there that could have you know, me and given me uh, a salary. The Army's given me uh, a future. The Army's given me a career. The Army's given me a legacy. Think about that. The Army gives you a legacy. I'm the first person at ECSU to obtain the rank of general officer. I'm going to go back there in April and speak to the class at ROTC. They're, they're spraying the award ceremony. Probably going to be in trouble. <laughs> but that's, the Army's giving you that legacy. The first black commandant of DAA school. That's a legacy for me. The Army's giving me the opportunity to do that. I don't know if another career field would give me the opportunity to create a legacy for my kids and for my community. People know where Sunbury, North Carolina is because of me. I talk about from Sunbury, North Carolina, small town, Northeast North Carolina, to where I go. People now know where Sunbury, North Carolina is because of John Harrison. I've given my community a sense of hope. People now can say that if that knucklehead can make it out of some area in general, I can do it too. You give people hope. So I think that PTSD has been showing up a bunch of dominant painting with, but I've argued that we can get PTSD from a lot of other things there in society. Uh, and I think we have more systems in place to help you get through that uh, and other support systems that are out there. Because right now, if you affect the bottom line of a company, that company moves you out of the way. If you affect the bottom line of IBM or bottom line of, of, uh, of uh, Verizon, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna get rid of you. The Army doesn't do that. We don't get rid of you because you, you know, have, a, have a concern right now. We work on that. We get after that. We try to make it a whole thing. Thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Congressman Knight. I'm a professor at my school here. 
so much in terms of, of credentialing. When you step out of your uniform in two years, go into the civilian sector, now you're more marketable than someone who just got ready to high school. You have discipline. I'm a disciplined soldier. Almost 50 years old, with the basic in 1991, if I had to roll my t-shirts and underwear, guess what? I still roll my t-shirts and underwear every day. Every day my bed is made. Because I'm a soldier. I was taught every day to make the bed. I believe in that. Making my bed is important to me. General McCray, my Apple McCrays, the uh, president of, of, of uh, UT gave a speech and wrote a book about making your bed. That's the one thing you get right some days is making your bed. Every morning, I make my bed because I don't know how my day's going to be. If I have a bad day at work, when I come home, I got one thing right. My dog on bed is making it. That's the one thing to check off. So it's a little thing in life. I would say you pursue that. Again, have an open mind about it. Learn about it, I'll tell you. If you're in high school, you think about joining the Army, learn about the Army, the facts about the Army. Don't let the myths drive you away from an opportunity because someone else said, hey, don't do that because you're going to come back with a, with a fake arm and you're going to have PTSD or you're going to be away from the kids. And just don't let that. Go find a recruiter like I did, Statue on Paul, who changed the trajectory of my life. Find someone that can educate you with the facts about military service then make a better informed decision. Because I think you will decide to join the Army, at least for a little while. You will have so much to gain. What do you have to lose? You can, I joined ROTC, and other people joined ROTC, because I was seeing my classmates in business, I major in business, they were senior year nervous as heck, because they had to find a job. They were going to job fairs on campus. And Dr. O, my instructor, Dr. Oriaki, said, hey, go to a job fair and you get your credit. I mean, my little hand says, hey, Dr. O, I went to a job fair, I got a job, I graduated. I'm going to be a lieutenant in the Army. I get credit. He's got a good point there. He said, I can get credit anyway. He made the right decision to join the Army and be an ROTC. 
So extra credit, we could, I don't have a job. So I didn't put on suits my senior year and go to job interviews and job fair that my classmates were. I wasn't sweating, I graduated. I was happy. Because the day before graduation, I took an oath and got commissioned. So I graduated, I was happy. Because I was getting paid, baby, right then and there. But my classmates were going out there putting on businesses and resume dusted off and going to a job interview with my first picture with it. In fact, funny story about me, a little bit of kindness, bought a car. Back in my day, you could get a new car loan through Nation's Bank, now Bank of America, with a 90-day deferred payment. So I got my car February the 11th, so I was graduating in May, and I'd have enough money in May to pay my first car payment. So I'm on campus a senior with a brand new 94 Honda Accord, money green, baby, playing R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> well played! <laughs> you know what it is. Yeah, well played. Brand new Honda Accord. Not paying a dime for it yet because my 90 day deferment was in effect. In fact, I had an old escort that I drove on rainy days and it had the Honda Accord on sunny days. I did that as a college senior because I had a job when I graduated. I was going to be a lieutenant and I did talk. I'm telling you, that peace of mind for me as a senior, priceless. I didn't sweat. My parents didn't sweat. I had two sisters back home, younger. I had to need money for, for my family. So I, didn't, I couldn't break my mom and dad's money to help sustain. I couldn't move back home either. So I didn't have that stress. So the Army ultimately gave me that peace of mind and that, that security to go. I can buy a new car. I can go out here and take out loans. I can buy a ring for my future wife. Because come, come uh, 1 May, Actually, one June, my first paycheck comes in, baby. I did go by recruiting after I graduated college, too, because I had about four months delay before going to Bowling, the face off future course. So, in order to cover the gap and make my car payment, I did go by recruiting. So, I stayed on campus after graduation and did recruiting in order to get my pitch started immediately. So, I could pay for my new car and still play hard tech. Cool. All right, great question. Any more questions? Now complete? All right, hey, I've enjoyed talking to you. How did I do? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Don't fake it now. Oh, yeah. My man right there, okay. Oh, I saw you, partner. I saw a thumbs down on you. All right, well, thank you. You gave me nothing. It's just too short. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You didn't hold on. No, thank you. I'm just kidding. I really enjoyed this. I hope I made you laugh and hope I gave you some information to think about. I hope I motivated you and inspired you. That's what I came here to do. Uh, I'm no different than you. I was you 37 years ago, but 28 for all CC, 37 for high school. Uh, and I was just as confused and uncertain as you were. But I listened to the news, listened to mentors, listened to family members, and saw an opportunity in the Army, and I chose it, and I don't regret it for a second. It's the best choice for me. It gave me a chance to really. To, to, to live a great life, to build a legacy for my kids, and to give back to my community. To put my hometown, Gates County, on the map. You two do the same thing. I'm no different. I'm not special. I just had the opportunity, and I took the opportunity to take the shot. So many of us get the chance to get the ball in our hand and go take the shot. We fumble it, or, or we drop the pass, and throw out of bounds. Take the shot. Take a chance on the Army. I promise you, you won't regret it. Uh, it's not perfect. Nothing in life is perfect, nor is the Army. But I will tell you, give you the opportunity to do something that you would not have a chance to do if you went a different route, if you went to the route of, uh, of a civilian job. The Army is far different in terms of being cared for you 24-7. There should be someone there to be there for you 24-7, a phone call away, a drive away, to make sure that you're taken care of. We give you that. And if you're not getting that, let somebody know. That person can get removed quickly. We don't pay for that. You are the support to us. Be a nice person. Who? Man, that's pretty good. You got to record that stuff on the TV? Are you going to do this tonight or something? Get your mind work? Thank you. All right. Thank you.
you know, make a pitch uh, for, for the Army, and this is a great time to, uh, to choose to serve uh, in the country, uh, to set yourself apart uh, from, uh, from, from other citizens of this country, because uh, it is not a profession that a lot of people can do or are willing to do. Uh, but, and, and you clearly set yourself up, yourself apart, and it's, and it's a great time. Uh, there's a lot of job opportunities out there in the Army. We're on some $50,000 cap bonuses, up to $50,000, uh, to get you started in the right direction. Uh, and there's a lot of job opportunities to qualify for them. So if you've never talked to an Army recruiter uh, before, I challenge you to do that because it's a free conversation uh, and it just lets you know whether you choose to join the service or not. It doesn't matter. But if, if it's right for you, see what you're qualified for. So I challenge each and every one of you to, 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 to see what you're what you would be eligible to do in the Army if you chose to do it. And if you don't if, uh, choose to do it, uh, that's, that's cool too. It's good luck to you. Uh, but uh, we, we definitely thank the people of North Carolina that you, you will be one part of uh, that, uh, that recognize and appreciate uh, military service. Uh, so you can be one of us or you can support us. But it's, uh, it's a, this is a great state to be from uh, and, uh, and a great state to be in uh, in survey. Uh, the military is full of traditions, uh, full of, full of uh, great traditions. One of those traditions is we always uh, like to uh, greet each other and, and say thanks a certain way by uh, presenting uh, little things that we call challenge points. And it's just a little, uh, little, little momentum of uh, our appreciation for one another uh, as we pass each other. And uh, we kind of, you know, this kind of thing kind of becomes collectible when you go in a, in a guy's office and serve in the military. You can kind of see where he's been and the stories and stuff that he's, uh, that he's had based on the, the points that you see on his, uh, uh, on his desk. Uh, so with that, I want to present uh, General Harrison here with a uh, with a, a tying point from the uh, U.S. Army recruiting tying here in uh, here in North Carolina. It's a way of saying thanks. I appreciate him coming. So uh, someday when I'm in his office and I see that Raleigh the tying point, uh, so I'll also get you a, you know an adult beverage and a, and a, and a place to be. <laughs> to reciprocate <laughs> with a nicer coin, <laughs> but I'm going to have to start on it. Uh, and certainly, uh, it's an honor to spend time with you in the Green Lodge of Keep Battalion and uh, all the great folks you had. This program here uh, that ties with uh, St. Aug and surrounding communities in Jarrah, D.C., it's outstanding. And uh, what I witnessed in my, in my day of being here is simply amazing. The state's in good hands. I'm going to retire at some point, and my future is sitting right in front of me looking at me. Uh, so in 27 years, you're going to be up here giving a coin to the future of the tag commander of the time. On behalf of myself and the entire ADA branch, that's pretty big right there, 12,000 people in ADA, I want to recognize you today. Thank you. I got another coin, but only if you, by a round of applause, think that Major Harris deserves his coin. I can't miss that plug. I have to tell you guys who are interested in my call. 
that the Army opportunities are endless, and I, I earn my doctorate degree zero cost from the, um, from the Army program. Okay? So please don't limit yourself. Don't sit with comfort. Comfort is not okay. I'm scared to die. Uh, I'm not scared of both people, but I'm sorry for my comfort zone. Alrighty? So thank you again for the opportunity, and thank you for coming with us today. And I couldn't have been without my team, so I have to, I have to highlight my air defense um, captain lieutenant, Thurman Joseph, one of my partners here. <laughs> Give a call to Lieutenant Joseph for all her great work. A fun fact about this lieutenant: she served in the battalion that I commanded years ago, so she knew about me before I came today because my picture's on the wall back there uh, as a former battalion commander and also as a former battalion commander who became a general officer. Uh, so uh, I'm honored. I saw the hat I pulled up in the car. I recognize that hat. I wore the same one. Uh, but I want to recognize her today in front of everyone. Thanks for today. Just been a phenomenal teammate uh, to Lieutenant uh, Major to Major Harris, uh, and really just being the super superstar. One last thing, you don't mind? Your army, I say your army because it's not just mine, it's your army. Your army paid for me to go to Georgetown University to get a master's degree. Also, to the U.S. Army War College, you got a second master's degree. I have not paid for a degree in my life. I have a bachelor's and two master's degrees because of the Army. To share that with you, okay? A little fun fact about that. The Army takes care of education. To make sure you get educated, higher degrees if you want. So maybe not a doctorate, I'm not quite that smart, but I did go to Georgetown. So thanks to the Army. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you guys again. Um, I know the white students have to get on the bus and get back to their campus on time. Sergeant Major and Major and Senator Have any? Do you guys have anything?